It is time for a hyper-realistic habitat again, and this time around, it's the West African Lion. So you can see a little glimpse of what you can expect today, but uh, now let's get into it and have a little talk about what's going on. All right, so you guys have been asking me for so, so long to do another hyper-realistic habitat. If you guys forgot, uh, the first thing we did was the one for the red panda quite a couple of months ago. And uh, this was a very a huge success in terms of uh, the discussions we had, in terms of, uh, you know, everything around this build, um, in terms of also how much I could improve upon my, my skill in, in terms of doing hyper-realistic habitats. But one more very important thing is we also have a new DLC since then, and it's not, not just like an, any DLC. The Europe DLC brought so many new pieces that are just absolutely perfect for a classical, very modern, but still classical European zoo habitat. And I thought, you know, what better animal to take than the West African lion. And there are a couple of things I want to get into before doing this. Now, the West African lion is a very specific animal in this game. And um, as much as I love Frontier and as much as I love the game, I assume that this is the first animal they ever did. Um, it feels like this is the animal that kind of was the proof of concept and um, this animal also seems to be a bit of the star of the show simply because it has been also the uh, cover animal and well at least digital cover you know um, so many things around this animal tell me that they had this animal um, done in the very early development of the game so now why am i talking about this it is very important to me because I think the animal can't quite hold up to modern day standards. This episode will still have the original mod, uh, the original in-game model, and I'm going to download the remaster of um, the wonderful lion from the modding community because they've done a way better job. Before I'm going to talk a bit more about this build, but we will have a real-time part because it, it's very important to show it to you in real time. So don't, um, you know, don't think I'm forgetting about this, but we will have to have the game open to talk you through because I will need your feedback. This is episode one of two, which is mostly about the outside of the habitat and I will need all of your input for the backstage and in internal building here. So um, back to the topic of the animal. I think Frontier has gotten so much better in doing animals and especially if you have a look at the Lynx uh, model of this game, it is just two classes better than the lion is. There's so many things about the lion that feels out of place now because Frontier and Planet Zoo especially have gone a lot more towards realism when it comes to the animals along the way and um, at the very beginning the animals sort of looked like a tiny bit more cartoony um, potentially to be in line a bit more with the art style of the, the game in general but the more animals we got and the more feedback the community gave um, you can hear that many people were so much into realism you know just speaking of the Binturong for example that has been remodeled and, um, you know, also kind of a weird discussion about other animals where Frontier has reacted and uh, improved the models upon the feedback of the community. And in general, Frontier has been a lot more focused on community feedback lately. Um, I'm very happy to say so. Um, I think it's fair to say that a lot of us um, that have been here from the early Planet Coaster days felt a little bit disconnected um, in in the last two years from, from Frontier's community management um, for, for several reasons, I guess. Um, one reason was that the entire community team has been exchanged in a way too short amount of time uh, for my liking, but uh, it, it, you know, normal things, you know, personal, personal preferences and stuff led to the fact that um, the lead community manager, Bo, left them after just a couple of uh, months, actually a year or a year and a half later than Ed did, um, and then Shante uh, followed along and there was a very short amount of time in which they could hand over, um, you know, uh, the the info and everything. And so it just took a little bit of time until they had a reconnect with the community, it feels. And I'm, I'm thinking they are doing a pretty good job at the moment to rebuild this bond with the community. And especially with the forums and the greater community, I want to call it, uh, and not only single individuals, you know, that 
can still channel a lot of things, but I'm always a bigger fan of listening to the entire community, to, to the people that play the game the most and not only creators like us. It's a, it's a nice benefit to have a close bond to them, but at the end of the day, we also want that as many people can enjoy the game as possible. And so I'm super happy that Frontier started to listen to more people uh, again uh, in a very nice way and really build the game upon their feedback. And so I think the last DLC uh, DLCs have always been pointing a lot more towards this point that we got more and more pieces that we wanted, more and more animals that we wanted, more and more changes to the overall game that we wanted, uh, except of, you know, just fulfilling a certain schedule that they have planned three years ago or so. So I'm very happy about this development, not gonna lie. And this is also the reason why I decided to go to, to the very origin back, back to, back to the OG Planet Zoo, um, because this is something I haven't really done since day one, I, I haven't really focused on a lion habitat that much. Like at the very beginning, um, in the beta and also then in the in the early game release, um, I did a whole bunch of lion habitats for several reasons. I love lions, but also because the community loved lions and the lions were you know bringing in the clicks easily without even having to sacrifice the fun or anything. It was no click by it at all because it it just was what you needed to do. I loved lions. I wanted to do lions, but then. I just completely, completely forgot about lions. They never fit in my projects entirely. I mean, yes, we have the Lion Falls habitat in Yosemite, which lately I started to think about redoing. Um, to, be, to be completely honest with you guys, there was a brief moment in time where I thought that I'm going to do this habitat here entirely for Yosemite. And there is still a little chance that I'm going to use it there. But maybe you guys have a better opinion about that than I have. Um, there are many, many things that I need to consider. Um, I like the habitat in Yosemite but it still feels a bit out of place because it's so humongous in comparison to everything else but that was potentially the last time I didn't I did a lion habitat and that is two years ago two entire years ago now yeah, that said, I wanted to go back to this and I wanted to build it as a classical zoo style, very realistic, uh, very much to what you would expect. And I did a huge research, like honestly, I've, I've, I've sat down for almost three hours straight, watched videos on YouTube. I went through, oh my God, how many threads on Zoo Chat. I checked a lot of uh, concept art from different zoos across Europe. Um, I checked the habitats of many, many zoos in Rotterdam, in uh, Amsterdam, in um, oh, what was it in Belgium one and several German ones a, a French zoo I forgot the name of um, and, and I just checked all the different lion habitats to get a get a good idea of what I want to do and I borrowed some ideas but I'm not recreating anything here uh, you would potentially see some little aspects that uh, could be familiar with you but anything else is just focused on um, making my own perfect lion habitat a very realistic, very conservation focused. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a huge area for the lions to thrive and, and have fun in without being watched by uh, the nasty eyes of the guest because they just can't. Um, there will be like a good opportunity still for guests to see the animals. There will be an infrastructure given uh, for deliveries and stuff. So I really thought about a lot of things that I wanted to incorporate. I wanted to make like a good in inside house. Um, where they have a lot of space uh, to enjoy that as well um, and also making sure that you know in the winter times uh, it's it's also possible for them to have a good time without you know being uh, so much in the cold outside even though I learned uh, during my research that lions can actually live pretty well with the cold like you know they're not like super like minus degree um, fans but they they still do like it um comment of the episode by the way before I forget is interrupter 19 who who said that I should make a Everglady park next in Dresser gold evolution um, and and fun stuff um, I'm planning on something like this so keep your eyes out if you want to see that but today is all about planet zoo so let's jump back to planet zoo um, just a little reminder if you guys want to be featured in the comment of the episode just keep commenting um, I'm just going to select a random comment every single episode where there is a chance to implement that um, that said I need to have a voiceover like that uh, in order to be able to put it in because in real time it's kind of impossible to do it um, otherwise it just feels super off Anyways, let's go back to the build, um, because as you can see over here, I'm doing a tiny little proof of concept of the in, you know, of the of the style of the house. And as I said, it's going to be very classic. I'm going to try 
to keep it as much as possible a little bit to the style of the Goodwin Mansion or the Goodwin House, the very first level of Planet Zoo, to really go back to the very beginnings um, of this game and then showcasing also what is possible with all the pieces and all the changes that we got along the way with the, you know, boxless shops and stuff. They will play a, a huge part in all of that um, and with everything else as well. It's going to be a very tough challenge and what you're going to see today is only a fraction of what this entire habitat is all about. But I thought I will split this into two videos, making sure that you guys have the chance to give all of your feedback uh, that you have for the build and um, yeah, make me make me aware of all the points that you will bring up because as much as I can research, there is always, uh, research is always um, driven by my question, you know, if you have a question, you try to answer, you have a certain way of researching while other people might have a different question or might have a different knowledge which leads to a completely different research and hence two completely different points. So that is why you guys might still come up with a totally different aspects of a realistic habitat that I'm maybe not even have thought about in the first place because it wasn't part of my question. Um, so yeah, a very interesting uh, topic by the way, but that's something for for, you know, a different video. Um, speaking of a different video, before I forget, today there will be also, if I get it done, uh, another video about a topic that you guys have been asking for since I created my YouTube channel. It's potentially the most asked question on the channel and I've always refused to answer it, but this time around I got um, I got a, I got a situation. I got into a situation where I found a solution how to do the video, and now I finally decided to make one. And basically, it is about the fact how you can be creative in any computer game. Um, that said, um, I'm not 100% sure if the video is going to find the the light of day today. Maybe it's tomorrow, but it's going to be there. So please keep an eye on the channel, and uh, you know, give this video a chance and give this video feedback. Uh, maybe it's going to help you. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna help you even though if you are already creative in the game I still believe there are some points in there. This video is um, inspired by a lot of things I learned over the last decade uh, studying being in a in a job where we have a lot to do with creativity and psychology so I'd be more than happy to see you there. But yeah um, we are moving strongly forward here with the build. You can see I put the lines in already. I made sure that we have a certain um, nice flow, making sure that everything looks good. And also, I, I tried a lot with different terrain mixtures, as you can see. I played around a lot this time around with um, mixing the different textures with a very low intensity. And I think it, it really gives the habitat a really cool look. If we zoom out later on, you'll see that, that the terrain only already gives a pretty sick texture to the entire habitat, which looks really cool. And I haven't I haven't really seen that previously so much in my build, so maybe I have to spend a bit more time on that because that will save um, a lot of pieces if you can already achieve something like that um, for the background. Um, and again, speaking of, of sidelines and looking into the foreground background, um, you always will build differently uh, to to create the same look in the end. Also, I'm quite a big fan of this retaining wall, or is it not really a retaining wall? It's like a kind of proper wall. Um, I'm a big fan of that wall. Um, I got inspired by highway sound blocking walls. Um, I tried to find good walls from zoos, but um, since we already have this pretty nice uh, rock facade here in the front, I didn't want to do it just another, which would be very likely. And I also didn't want to do a concrete wall because that's also kind of a bit too boring if you ask me. And so I ended up with this, uh, you know, I, I want to call it highway wall. These typical highway walls you put down uh, to, to make sure that the sound is blocked as much as possible for the living quarters nearby. Anyhow, it's time to jump over into the real time part and I hope you guys want to see more of it. So let's go. All right, so here we are in the real time part, as promised, and uh, I'm gonna go over the build without trying to, you know, go into other topics as always. <laughs> Not going to be distracted here. So this is the build, and I'm gonna pause real quick uh, over here so you can see the lines over there. I'm just going to go through all the aspects of the habitat itself. Now, as you can tell, um, it is a huge habitat in terms of space, but uh, what I wanted to achieve is that from the guest perspective, it just kind of doesn't really seem that 
huge. Um, imagine this is going to be the lion house. We're going to have some, some cool designs going on over here. This is all for the second episode. Um, everything like details and interior is planned for the second episode. Let me just go quickly in so we have that check marked. So this is the interior of the house. Uh, we will get some shops over here, some educational stuff and so on. And then we've got this interior part number one and interior part number two. You can see it's relatively sizable. Um, so it's quite a bit of space in here. Um, and I assume even the winter times we could have this entire area over here could be heated for them with like you know sneakily hidden uh, heaters uh, everywhere so that would work and then the rest of it would be kept cool um, or like well not kept cool but you wouldn't necessarily put something in here but as I said lines can adapt very relatively nice to temperatures um, which I didn't know um, evolution just kind of made them um, you know adjust a bit more to the hot temperatures but they used to live in quite a lot of different climate areas and so um, they are relatively good in adapting to certain temperatures again not really too much into the minus degrees but still um, now um, we also have this huge backstage area, which I'm going to I'm going to fill with a lot of interesting stuff and uh, making sure that this all is an integral part of this ent entire build. Uh, one thing I'm though not sure of is what I'm going to do with this area over here. So your input is actually needed. My idea was to have a little little bit of an implied hill, which is going to receive a wonderful um, raised viewing platform, um, almost in the form of an overhang. Um, terrace kind of thing um, which I could assume would be looking really cool if we put that here and have like a bit of a fake wall and then the rest is going to be nature um, you know with a with a bit of a fence and stuff going on and also I'm going to make like a proper fencing with nature down here I might also change the waterfront a little bit to make it a bit more thin and not that huge but I'm not entirely sure I, if this would be in uh, a build within another build um, I could imagine putting that one as a lake or something over here but as this is just something you know for a one 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 off and also a blueprint that I want to give to you which um, you definitely need a huge park for that <laughs> uh, this is going to be it now as you can see, this is the habitat itself, and let's talk about the different separate areas. Again, this is the main building with the connection to the backstage area. There is also the um, keeper's area. There's going to be where the keeper preparation stuff is going, where they can sleep and everything, you know, all the basic stuff. We've got a lot of enrichment here in the front. This is the main viewing area from the guest part here. We've got like a little sneaky way going through some planters and stuff. Again, that's not finished. We will make this all look a bit better. Also have some plants from the other side side I imagine this being like a little bit of an alley um, in which we will have some medium-sized trees along that line and then have some lower growing stuff in the front to really uh, you know hug the waterfront really nicely we've got that bridge going to the going to the special thing which is inspired by the Wuppertaler Zoo in Germany um, they do have something like that where you can go underground in the midst of the habitat that they have they also have like a huge thing there and then they have like this uh, fake rock in which you can go in and from there you can see the lions up close if they roam around this rock and you can see I kind of made this in a way it's pretty hidden we still need to do these one side glass things in here um, make the interior look a bit better but I think you can already tell the idea um, that you can walk in here and then just have a look if you can see the lines you actually are granted with some um, very nice views this is a very far view in here as well on this side you've got a pretty good view to the side over here imagine you are you climb up here and have a little look you can see the lines uh, that are just over here and the same goes for the other side so this is on a little bit of a raised position so that you can uh, see most of the back habitat in here and then uh, we have a lot of nice little design going on here this is very zoo like you know having the different uh, height elevations to make it really look proper and look good and I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with how this turns out so far I think the habitat looks fantastic from the outside there's still a huge work um, that has to be done in the inside and this is where you guys come into play okay last but not least um, we'll finish this video off with what I've started talking about and that is the lion let's go quickly over to the lion model I'm not too much of a um, of a fan of the male model um, mainly the the female model is kind of okay it could be a tiny bit more aggressive and a tiny bit more um, harsh or hard I gotta call this this is maybe a tiny tiny bit too friendly even though they can look pretty 
pretty friendly. These are gorgeous animals, but I think you get what I mean. Um, it's not looking pointy enough. It's a little bit roundish, a little bit soft in, in terms of that. Um, and this gets even worse with the male version. Now, don't get me wrong. We are, we are talking very high level here, you know. These models are brilliant, and at the beginning of Planet Zoo's journey, I really didn't feel this at all. I really felt these look great because they were in line with all the other animals but the more re-changes we got the more remodels we got the more changes to the new models we got uh, and the more new models we got i think they just fell a little bit short um if I want to say that like with percentage, you know, the links for me is 100% at this point um, and the line just fell down to, I don't know, like 80% or something. Um, and yeah, there is like a couple of things. I mean, they improved a lot of things along the way. The, um, the, the shading of the fur has been improved, especially here with the moon and stuff. Um, really, really good stuff, um, but still... The, the face and the ears and everything, it just can be better. And you will see next episode, I'm going to put the um, Lion Remaster in this game as well, just to show you the differences. And I really hope at some point, maybe Frontier is going to make a kind of revamp update or something like that. This would be really cool and really appreciated because they definitely have the skill to do so. And it's not going to be that huge of a change. It still is a brilliant model, but I wanted to talk about that because it is an important uh, point for me. Uh, why I wanted to do it also in the first place and uh, yeah, this is the build so far and now guys It is very important to understand from from your perspective. How you like the build? Is there anything from the outside that you would do different? Are you are you a fan of the idea with the race platform over here? Or do you have different ideas? Um, just you know just keep me informed in the comments make sure to hit the comment section very hard today and bring down a lot of comments about this and mainly focus on what you would love to see on the interior part of the habitat and if you've got a go-to lion habitat that you love please let me know as well so i can check some photos and get inspiration thanks so much for watching as always i hugely uh, appreciate it if you guys would consider subscribing if you haven't already that helps me out growing the channel and everything else is just a pure joy from my side that you enjoy my videos now thank you guys so much uh, for watching uh, stay safe everyone and i talk to you in the next one